This video is sponsored by MCRU, manufacturers of the power cords and mains distribution blocks used by a British audiophile. For more information about these and their other products, please click the link in the description. If it sounds like I'm on the set of Wuthering Heights, it's because it's very stormy out there, so apologies for any background noise that you're picking up. But I need to get this filmed today, otherwise there's no way I'm getting this video out before Christmas. And this is my last video of 2023. Have I saved the best for last? Possibly. I can't think of another year where I've covered such diversity in the amplifiers that I've reviewed. Products from the Japanese establishment. The Retro Chic Yamaha AS2200 the all-in-one Marantz Model 40N and the gorgeous Accuphase E280. British brands were also well represented with the likes of the resurrected Musical Fidelity A1, the new Audiolab 7000A and the excellent Cambridge Audio CXA61. Chinese brands like Choco Sound with their AMA trying to rock the Apple cart and Fozzy Audio's V3 offering maximum bang for the buck. Amplifiers from small outfits driven by passionate enthusiasts such as More Amps with their Angel Pre and Angel 4 Power Amp and MVA with their passive P50SA preamp and M600 monoblocks. Yeah, 2023 has been quite a journey, so let me talk you through some of the highlights. It's amazing what you get for your money these days. If you want proof that you don't have to spend a fortune to get great performance, look no further. I came across a couple of real crackers this year. The Cambridge Audio CXA61 retails for £699 in the UK, but is regularly on sale for less. It's a Class AB amplifier outputting 60 watts per channel into 8 ohms and 90 watts per channel into 4 ohms. That's about double the power of the superb AXA35 that won my amplifier of the year in 2022. The ESS Sabre 9010 K2M based DAC offers Bluetooth, USB, coax and two optical Toslink connections. There are four analog RCA inputs, pre-outs, a subwoofer connection and switchable AB speaker terminals. After reviewing the AXA35, I wanted to check out what Cambridge Audio had to offer if you spent a bit more money. There was no guarantee I'd prefer the more expensive amplifier, I think I described it in my review as sometimes when designers are chasing extra performance, they can throw the baby out with the bathwater. I needn't have worried in the case of the CXA61. The overall personality of the CXA61 is similar to the AXA35, that smooth and warm tonality, but with less coloration and greater resolution. The DAC is perfectly suited to the task. What I mean is you don't get a drop in quality using the internal DAC, through the digital inputs compared to analog inputs fed by decent quality external sources. And there's decent bass performance, but this is an area where the CXA61 is bettered by some alternatives for the price. I also wouldn't partner it with speakers that are particularly difficult to drive. But other than that, I have no caveats. It's the mids and highs that seduced me with crisp transients, full bodied sound, a top end that's extended and refined. It sits alongside the Entry Audio Lab as my favourite amplifier for the price. The 6000A doesn't have the warmth and richness of the CXA61, but I'm pretty sure offers a touch more detail and certainly better bass control. If you take everything out of an amplifier other than its ability to amplify a signal and your ability to adjust the volume, how little can you get away with spending? I'd have said about £300 until I came across this little gem. For £99, the Fozzy Audio V3 comes dressed in an all-metal enclosure. Yeah, that includes the front fascia and the volume control, for that matter as well. It doesn't get more minimalist than this. There's just one RCA input on the back and a 3.5mm pre-out for bi-amping or connecting a powered subwoofer and some speaker binding posts, of course. The beauty is more than skin deep. Top quality German Weimar, Japanese NCC, and Elner caps are found on the inside. On the flip side, two Class D Texas Instruments TPA3255 power amplifier modules are hidden under that heatsink, specified to deliver 300 watts per channel. Forget those ratings, there's lots of ways to manipulate specs, but I would go for the optional 48 volt 5 amp power supply that will cost you an extra 30 quid. Even then, the V3 is only really suitable to use in small rooms with easy to drive speakers, 
but get the dance partner right and it'll deliver a surprisingly detailed and neutral sound with solid bass. It's far from the harsh and thin sound of inexpensive Class D amplifiers from the past. The best sub 500 pound Class AB amplifiers like the IOTA VX SA3 will offer up a wider soundstage, greater dynamics and the ability to drive more demanding speakers but at over four times the price. Spend a couple of hundred pounds on speakers and a similar amount on a CD player, streamer or turntable. Just make sure if you're getting a turntable it has a phono stage fitted or one that you can use externally. And you can even connect it up to one of those dongle DACs for less than a hundred pounds that you hook up to your phone or laptop. Job done. If you're getting started in this hobby or you're looking for an additional system in a small room and you don't want to spend an awful lot of money and you're only connecting one source, I can't think of anything that represents better value for money. And that's why the Fozzy Audio V3 is my best amplifier of 2023, below £1,000. I reviewed eight amplifiers in this price range in 2023, more than any other category. So I'm just going to discuss my three favourites. If you want to check out some of the others, there are playlists on my channel that you can dive into for amplifiers and for speakers and source components for that matter as well. And just as a way of reminder, for all the products that I discuss in this video today, I'll link to the full reviews in the description of this video. So there's easy access there. The Atoll Iron 300 retails for a pound less than three grand. A throwback to the 1990s when many audiophiles integrated their two channel systems into home cinema setups using powerhouse amplifiers to drive the front two channels. It produces 150 watts into 8 ohms and 260 watts into 4 ohms. The dual mono design is backed up by a monster power supply to deliver current with two 440 VA transformers and 81,600 microfarads of power supply filter capacitance. There are four RCA analog inputs, a tape loop, direct access to the power amp via bypass input, two sets of pre-outs and a balanced XLR input. The AKM AK4490 base DAC is excellently implemented with two coax, two optical and a USB input covering the bases as far as digital connectivity is concerned. The architecture and the power is the reason why the Ion 300 delivers such impressive scale and dynamics. But there's also very good detail retrieval all wrapped up in a warm blanket of tonality. is isn't quite as rich and full sounding as a Sugden A21 signature but it's definitely heading in that direction, nor does it have the transient snap or quite the ability to extract as much information from recordings as my Hegel H190, but it's a worthy alternative for people looking for a fuller presentation. It was all the way back in 2020 when I reviewed the Audiolab 6000A, and this year I got to review its big brother. The Audiolab 7000A will set you back an extra 450 quid at £1,099. You don't get USB and HDMI eARC digital inputs on the 6000A. Other than that, the 7000A is pretty much identical externally. The internal architecture is also very similar to the 6000A. However, the designer informed me that there are lots of subtle tweaks to improve performance and an uprated power supply to lift power from 50 watts per channel to 70 watts per channel. The DAC is improved too, ditching the 6000A's ESS Sabre 9018 K2M chip for a newer ESS 9038Q2M chip. Over a decade ago, at these kind of price points, these ESS DACs seemed to rule the world. John Westlake was the designer who worked for Cambridge Audio, then went on to work for Audiolab and from there to Project, and he really knew how to squeeze the performance out of ESS-based DACs. Unsurprisingly, some years later, these companies are still using ESS-based DACs that sound very good. But the analog section of the 7000A is something to note as well. It retains that Audiolab house sound, class leading clarity, great control with tonality that's on the dry and analytical side of neutral. It just missed out on my top outstanding award and that's because I felt its own junior stablemate offered slightly better bang for your buck and by logical deduction you can put the Cambridge Audio AXA61 in that category as well. Maybe I was being a little bit harsh but it's my job to be picky and justifiably and intentionally for that matter, those outstanding awards are hard to come by. But this amplifier is great and if you're looking for an amplifier around thousand pounds to use with an internal DAC, I doubt you can do much better for the money. 
What do they say? Don't meet your heroes. I was excited but also a tad nervous about reviewing the new Music Fidelity A1. The original had seduced me back in the late 80s when I was getting into hi-fi. Re-released in 2023, the A1 plays close homage to the original Tim DiParavicini design, running in Class A and producing 25 watts per channel into 8 ohms. Components have been updated and upgraded, but the circuit architecture and industrial design is essentially the same. The Fano stage was absent from the original, let alone one that supports moving magnet and moving coil cartridges. Four RCA inputs, a tape loop and pre-outs complete the connectivity options. I'm sure Tim's looking down from somewhere and smiling about how much buzz this amplifier has created some four decades after the original was released. I'm all in. There's something special about Class A amplifiers if done right, and this one is done right. There's that smooth mid-range which is harmonically saturated, and this amplifier also has a sweet sounding top end and very good information retrieval capabilities. It's a joy to listen to all day without any listening fatigue if you want. At £1,400, it's just over half the price of the entry Sugden A21 signature and gives you more than a hint of what that amplifier is about. Okay, so it runs hot and 25 watts per channel isn't going to be enough to drive the most demanding speakers or play to levels where you're rattling the window panes no matter how good the power supply and there's a good one inside this amplifier. That's why I think it'll be enough for a lot of people in most scenarios. I really didn't want to give it back, but I've already got reference gear bursting at the seams at different price points, and I can't buy everything. I suppose the bottom line is I was seduced by the sound of the new one, as I was the original back in the 1980s, and that's why the Music Fidelity A1 is my best amplifier of 2023, between £1,000 and £3,000. My first choice is an amplifier that retails for £300,000. Ah, just kidding. I put a limit on the stuff that I review for 2023 at £10,000. I may lift that a little bit for 2024, but we'll see. I want to kind of stretch organically with the products that I review, and there's still plenty of gear out there between three and £10,000 that interests me. I made some fantastic discoveries in 2023. Accuphase's entry amplifier comes in at just under five grand. The quality of finish on the front fascia of the E280, the resistance of the input selector and the smoothness of the volume dial make it the finest traditional amplifier to interact with that I've encountered so far. Below the array of RCA inputs, tape loops and pre-outs is a balanced XLR input, A and B sets of speaker binding posts on the right and slots to fit optional DAC and phono boards on the left. Accuphase is short for accurate phase. It's a philosophy that informs everything they do, from the low feedback circuitry to a sophisticated volume control and the general design architecture. Accurate phase is exactly what you get, the E280 times beautifully, throwing out images that are wide and deep with performers securely located. There's excellent resolution and refinement throughout the mid-range and treble as well, but for a 90 watt per channel amplifier into 8 ohms, the bass is a little bit woolly. There's also a touch of leanness to the mid-range, That extra body and control is exactly what Accuphase is reputed to deliver as you move higher up the range, and that's something that I hope to find out myself. More Amps is a small British manufacturer that also believes in preserving the timing of the signal. The Angel Preamplifier and the Angel 4 Power Amplifier retail for £2,795 and £4,995 respectively. The preamp has minimal but high quality parts in the signal path, essentially a passive preamp with a unity gain buffer to drive cables. It can be switched from floating to fixed ground if you have ground loop problems. There are four RCA inputs, a tape loop, home theatre bypass and single ended RCA as well as balanced XLR analog outputs. The accompanying Angel 4 power amp is a class AB low feedback design capable of delivering 75 watts per channel into 8 ohms and doubling up into 4 ohms. Not much to note on the rear, just single-ended RCA connections. It's a shame there's no XLR to connect to the preamp for long cable runs, but that's reserved for its big brother, the £8,495 Angel 6. Tim Narrimore took 30 years of tinkering with the design before bringing his amplifiers to market. His passion, his endurance and his skill as an engineer show up in the performance. These amplifiers are exquisitely detailed, totally natural in tone, and present a beautifully 3D layered soundstage. 
I just wish they offered a little bit more bass slam. I tend to find that with passive amplifiers or those with unity gain, they lack that last little bit of oomph. But the more duo are the best sounding amplifiers that I've reviewed so far. If you can afford them, and more importantly, if you can locate them, they're definitely worth checking out. Back in March 2023, I reviewed a little pre-power stack that took my breath away. The MVA P50 Passive Preamp retails for £475 and the 35W per channel S80 Power Amp for £975. MVA is another boutique British manufacturer that takes their design philosophy to the extreme. Pull out everything that you don't need and what's left, make sure it's as good quality as it possibly can be. There's some other clever stuff going on as well that I discuss in my full review. I felt that the little S80 amplifier was only truly suitable for near field listening. Anything more than that, you're going to have to be extremely careful about the speakers you pair up to it. But I was so impressed with it, I thought, let's skip the ones in the middle. Let's check out what the top of the range MBA amplifiers have to offer. They sent me the P50 SA preamp that ditches the Alps volume pot for a stepped attenuator made from audio note precision resistors. The cost increases to £925. The M600 monoblocks will set you back £3,000. At 80 watts per channel into 8 ohms, they're not powerhouses, but have two 150VA Troidy transformers inside per monoblock to stiffen things up. My comments for the more amps I can cut and paste here. These amps are exquisitely detailed, natural in tone, and have a beautifully layered soundstage. The more amps will play louder and have slightly better bass control, but other than that, there isn't much in it. The NVAs offer 90% of the performance for 50% of the price. So why aren't they still here? They're better than my exposure pre-monos in so many ways. Well, they're dynamically a little bit polite. It's probably down to that passive preamp. So I think I'll miss the rhythmic drive and the little bit of extra warmth that my exposures bring. But the NVAs offer phenomenal value for money. And that's why the NVA P50SA preamp and the M600 monoblocks are my best amplifiers of 2023, above 3,000 pounds. Well, that's it for this year, and the roof just about stayed on this place whilst filming this video. My question for today is what have been your favourite amplifiers over the last year, and the reasons why, please share that in the comments section. I'm sure you know what to do by now if you like what I do and you want to see this channel grow. Please like, share, subscribe, hit the bell notification. Also, check me out on Patreon. There's a couple of consultancy tiers you can access there if you think I can help you on your audiophile journey. Also, check out the ABA Club on Patreon, which has some great ways to interact with me and fellow Patreons. But for today, for now, the British audiophile, signing off.